Hey everyone, my name is Jack Perotta. I am a 27 year old online entrepreneur and owner of Ecom Excellence, which is an online education company teaching Aussies how to start their own online businesses from home. I started documenting my journey on YouTube back in 2017. And throughout what I've learned over those past five years and building my own online course, I think this video will help you a lot to understand how I've done it and how you can do the same thing with your own online course. I've got a big video ahead, so before I get into the bulk of it, what I want you to do is check out the link below where I've got a free PDF on what I'm gonna be talking about here. It goes more in depth, completely free to download, so check the link down below if you want that. Now, if this video helps you or you do enjoy this kind of content, it would mean a lot to me if you gave this video a like, maybe sub to the channel as well. But apart from that, hope you enjoy. Okay, let's get into this. So I'm recording this whole thing in Loom. Uh, it's the first time I'm recording in Loom, so we'll see how we go. Um, I'm going to be moving my fat head around here like this quite a bit, but let's get into it. So, starting your own course business. Now, I've done this for a 2022-23, and it's going to look weird because it looks like, it's going to look like I'm looking down here, but I'm actually looking at my screen. When I move myself up here, okay, looks like I'm looking more more at the camera. So, I'll try and talk more to you guys. Anyway. We'll get into it. So there's going to be a complete blueprint. Like I said before, if you want the actual PDF, which gives you more written details, it'll be in the first link down below. Okay, go ahead and download that completely free and it'll show you how I've done a complete course business up to six figures. And me personally, I've done it with no advertising, all organic traffic, but we'll get into that a bit later. Okay, so, so we get into this. So who am I? Okay. Who is Jack Perotta? Who who is talking? Who are you who are you learning from? Okay, it's it's good to know. You can skip this part of the video if you want, but it's good to know who's teaching you this stuff, just so we can build a bit of rapport. Okay, you know who I am, and uh, feels a bit more personal. Okay, it's it's better to learn from someone you know than from someone who's a complete stranger, in my opinion. So, tell you a bit about me. I am a twenty-seven year old entrepreneur. Okay, I've been doing this entrepreneur stuff for. Been running my own businesses, like basically businesses since um, around, I would say, 2017. Okay, it was when I first started. I worked in retail up until I was about 22 years old, up until around that 2017 sort of era that year. Uh, I work, I don't really talk about this, but I used to work in JB Hi-Fi. I worked in there for about four years, uh, four, maybe five years, okay? And before then, I'd worked in other places like Big W and a couple of other small jobs, but my main retail business was JB Hi-Fi. Absolutely loved it, okay? Uh, but it got to the point where, you know, I wanted to move on. But I loved retail. I loved, it, it built me into, you know, who I am today. It built me into, you know, it built the confidence in me, built, you know, being able to talk to people. It really instilled all that in me, being able to sell, learning about products, learning about systems, okay? I love that job. I love JB Hi-Fi. I used to work in the games area, like in the game section and cameras and CDs. I used to be a salesperson. I used to work the registers. Did all that stuff. I loved it. It was great. Okay. Now, when it came to my uh, entrepreneur side of things, I started e-commerce back in 2017, selling on Amazon. Okay. I'm not going to go into too much detail with that because I have videos on it on my channel already. But that's what I first started doing. I wanted to really get into you know, doing uh, like a side hustle, running my own kind of uh, online business, sort of working for myself. That's how I got the motivation to do that. Uh, I learned about different kinds of different kinds of businesses, but to me, Amazon FBA kind of stuck out because I could get my own product out. I could see, you know, I didn't have to see or touch the product and I could do it all from my laptop, right? So I began documenting my journey in late 2017. I started the whole Amazon thing late 2016, but really started selling in 2017. And then I started, you know, this time I was still working, uh, still in my retail job. So I was earning a bit of money on the side doing that. And I, and I started telling my friends and family about it, saying, hey, you should really get onto this. And people were saying, look, could you make a video on it? Could you, you know, talk about it, maybe do a video? And I thought, why don't I start posting on YouTube? Because not only that, I was an Aussie doing it. So I thought, I don't really see any people in Australia doing it on YouTube. So why not? I started documenting on YouTube, just, you know, my whole process and and really just my whole journey for this whole e-commerce stuff, right? So skip to uh, basically a year later, six months to a year later, I launched Ecom Excellence, which is my education business, which I'll talk about in a second. I launched that in mid-2018, okay? So I launched it from 
the, it was basically from the demand of people watching my YouTube friends and family. I had no intention of, of launching a course. Okay. Back then I just wanted to do, you know, sell products, do e-commerce stuff, but I had so much demand from people saying, look, Jack, you know, these videos are great, but can you do a complete step-by-step -step from your complete beginner, you know, how you search for products, how you talk to suppliers and all of that. And, uh, you know, do a step-by-step -step and we'll pay you to do it. Okay. We want a complete course. We'll, we'll pay you. I literally had people say, I'm happy to pay you. So I thought, why don't I just do a course? Why don't I just do a step-by-step -step that was geared towards Aussies? Because a lot of Aussies or, or a lot of people that had moved from another country to Australia, they want to sell in Australia, do a side hustle. Okay. Most of these people wanted to do it as a side hustle, make a bit of extra money. And I thought, okay, let's do a course. So I launched Ecom Excellence in mid-2018, right? We'll talk a bit more about that later. My current goal though on YouTube is 10K subs. So please, please, please subscribe. Okay. Hopefully we get to 10K subs by the end of the year. We'll see what happens. But if you like this video, please sub. Okay. Now, Ecom Excellence, like I said, is my education business. It's an Aussie-based learning platform teaching how to create your own online business. Okay. So I predominantly started uh, teaching in AU, right? This has always been AU since launching mid-2018. And I'm at the point now where I'm looking to start expanding. Okay. I would love to still teaching Aussies. I would love to do that. I've always loved teaching Aussies, but I want to slowly expand to not just teaching Aussies, but expand to other parts of the world as well. And this is where this video, this kind of business uh, that I'm going to be talking about in this video is coming into. Okay. This is coming into reaching a wider audience, right? So Currently, I've enrolled close to a uh, thousand students in Ecom Excellence. That is over, uh, you know, majority of them being in Amazon FBA course, another one being in a dropshipping course, which I'll get to in a second. So almost at a thousand students. I launched in mid 2018. Now, back then it was called Amazon Seller Excellence, right? Uh, I rebranded, I think, in about 2019. I think it was 2019 I rebranded into Ecom Excellence. Uh, but we launched in mid 2018 with just the Amazon FBA course. Dropshipping course launched in 2020. So that was, again, I got into dropshipping. It was a very similar process. <clears throat> got into dropshipping, had a lot of people, uh, you know, I basically documented what I was doing, documented my success, right? And then I started getting people asked, hey, are you doing this? Hey, are you doing this? Again, you know, I was posting stuff on YouTube, didn't have the intention really of doing a course. I knew about the course business at that point, didn't really have an intention until people started saying, are you going to make a course on this? Because people knew that I had an Amazon FBA course. It was getting some successful students in. I thought, look, you know, can you teach this as well? We'll pay you to do that. So I launched that in 2020. And then <clears throat> in uh, 2020, I also built, that was the point where Ecom Excellence got to a six figure a year business, which I'll show you some screenshots and things like that. Just so you know that I'm not joking, you know that this is actually serious and I'm not lying with this. Uh, Ecom Excellence is a six figure a year business. So uh, has gotten to that point um, as of back in 2020. I reached a peak of about 15 to 20K a month, and that was in 2020. Um, I think the highest month I got was about 18 to 19K, I think. And um, the good part about this is, which I'll talk about in a second, is that it was quite highly profitable because I wasn't doing ad any advertising, it was coming from organic traffic from my YouTube. So I reached a peak of that. And all revenue, like I said, has come from organic traffic through YouTube and social media. Again, we'll talk about this later in the video. Uh, just, you know, doing organic traffic from having a following to selling without a following. We'll talk about that as well. And it has produced a lot of successful students, right? I'm very proud of the fact that Ecom Excellence has produced a lot of successful students from, uh, you know, having people launch their first product on Amazon all the way to Students selling, you know, I've got a student, Rafe, his name is, I've done, uh, I've done interviews with both these students that I'm listing here. He's selling over 100K a year. And then we've got Athar, who has a team of people helping him now, who's selling over 500K a year on Amazon. And he's at the point where he's actually handling other, uh, other sellers' accounts for them. So he does other services now as well, surrounding Amazon selling, and he's doing great. Okay. He went from completely jobless, uh, you know, due to COVID, he went from jobless to, doing a 500k a year business on Amazon. It's, it's great to see. I, I love it. I love success stories like that. And that's 
greater than anything I've ever done on Amazon. And that was the goal for me. Okay. I got to the point where I loved teaching people and that predominantly came my main business. And I loved that. I love teaching people. I wanted people to do way more than what I ever did on Amazon. Okay. I got to the point with my Amazon selling where I was maybe doing about 5k in sales or so a month and just learning the processes, right? I sold on Amazon US, then predominantly sold on Amazon AU, launched multiple products, okay? Some of them were good, some of them weren't so good, and I learned a lot along the way. But I love the fact that when I started teaching people, I became, like, I fell in love with the teaching and I wanted students to be a lot more successful than what I was on Amazon. That was the goal. I think I've succeeded in a lot of ways. So, I move my head down here, okay? What we'll be covering? Okay, what is an online course? I move myself over here. So we'll be covering what an online course is. We'll be covering what a successful six-figure course looks like. Okay, I'll show you some screenshots of mine, like I said. Finding your niche and market. So the main thing, which we'll get into again, like I said, is you might not know how to make your own course. You might think that, okay, I don't have any money-making skills. I don't, I don't really know like uh, what I can sell, I don't know what I can offer. We'll get into that because you've actually got more to offer than what you think, okay? And it's not just money-making courses, okay? So we'll also look in into selling without a following as well. So you don't have to have a following like what I did. Again, I only had a very small following when I launched my, my first course, very, very small. Uh, but we'll talk about selling without a following as well. We'll also talk about whether you pre-make a course Okay, whether you make the whole thing and sell it or whether you pre-sell it, as in you sell it before it's made. Okay. Hosting platforms, we'll talk about what what hosting, like basically where I have my course hosted on so people can create an account, you know, purchase it, create an account, access it, things like that. Talk about pricing your course because that's a, another struggle for a lot of people that don't know how much to charge. And then uh, talk about launching your course as well and scaling to 10K a month. We'll go into, into detail uh, with all these points. Only things that won't be covered in this uh, will be a couple of things, business setup and taxes, okay? I don't think it's completely necessary for this video. If you want a separate video on this, I'm happy to do that, but we won't cover it in this one. All right, so what is an online course? So it's basically a modern version of courses, okay? Courses as in like university courses, as in like you know, physical lectures, okay? Online courses, you can create and share learning content in an organized way that allows users to pro progress their understanding of a certain topic. It consists basically of a curriculum or study plan organized in units. So it's basically like, we'll get into this again later, but it's basically like an organized set of, of information that gets you from point A to point B, right? So how can you benefit from this? Okay, and I'll move my head over here. So if you have knowledge on a certain topic, uh, you've learned a particular skill, uh, you've had success in a certain area, or even if you've had a career in a field which you can teach to others, you've got the base, okay? Then you've got a solid foundation to create an online course business and start earning money teaching people what you know. Okay, so like I said, we'll get into this next slide here. It doesn't have to be a money-making course, okay? A lot of people think that... Now, I'll get into a little bit more info about mine in a second, but... A lot of people think that, okay, I don't have skills to start a, start a business. I don't have skills to make money. You know, I won't be able to do a course. It doesn't have to be Amazon. It doesn't have to be dropshipping course. It doesn't have to be a trading course. It doesn't have to be a social media marketing agency course. It doesn't have to be that. It can be something that doesn't have anything to do with making money. And we'll get to that in a second. Okay, so here's a list of some of the most current popular course niches. And this is of this year, of 2022 and beyond. Okay. And it's gonna stay this way. It's not just gonna be money-making courses. People aren't just interested in money-making courses, right? And then there, there's a lot of successful courses out there that aren't money-making. So of course you've got business, marketing, technology, crypto trading, right? But you might know other skills, okay? Do you know how to edit video? Video production, graphic design. I know uh, even my partner, for instance, okay? She has made money creating uh, creating you know bits of graphics on Canva, which is a free online tool. Making money selling that, you can create a course out of that, okay? Graphic design, photography, do you know how to take photos on a professional camera, right? Arts and crafts, okay? There's a lot of people that are interested in just doing arts and crafts, right? And uh, 
there's a lot of different courses out there that make a lot of money. They're not money-making courses, but they make a lot of money, okay, for those creators. We've also got health and fitness and personal development, right? So your main focus should be to get your students from point A to point B. Make sure you set a clear goal for your students, okay? So point A is where your students currently are, right? And we'll give an example of this as well. Point B, where your students want to be or a certain goal that they want to achieve, right? So have an example, personal development course, okay? I'm gonna to have to move my head again, but that's okay. So let's just say this is, a, this is a course example. Let's say you've had a lot of experience over the past five years when it comes to personal development, right? You've struggled with depression. You were, un, you were very unhappy with the quality of your life. Now, okay, let's say five years later, you've improved your own mental health and quality, quality of life by changing your habits and setting goals. You've identified how to successfully develop into a better, uh, healthier and happier person. You now believe you can help others to do the same by following the steps you took. So let's say you have, you know, you, you've done really well at this and you think you can help a lot of other people do the same. Okay. So your point A would be student is currently depressed, unmotivated, has no goals, is unhealthy, etc. Now your point B for them would be Okay, you want to help your student to do the same thing as what you did. Your student has clear goals and direction, is healthier, and they're living a higher quality of life. It might not seem like much, but you've got a point A and a point B. Okay, and that's the most important part is to give them a clear path, right? And that's where the basis of your online course will be. Okay, so you're helping them by giving them a step-by-step -step plan on how they can achieve that certain goal. Okay, that can be anything, right? So... I'm gonna talk a little bit about the beauty of a successful online course business. All right, move myself over here. So these are just a few screenshots of my own personal course. These aren't fake. These have come from screenshots from my own phone, my own desktop, all right? Mostly from Stripe, okay? So like I said, this is the this is 2020, my first six-figure, uh, Ecom Excellence first six-figure year, okay? And again, like I went from, I don't like talking too much about this because I don't want it to all be about money, right? But it's important because that's the part that's changed my life the most. Obviously, I like helping other people, but you need to obviously think about money because it's how we live. You need money to live, right? But the the big thing that I want to point out here is as a manager, back when I was in, in retail, as a manager, I was making maximum like as a 20, 21-year-old, maybe I think 22 at that point, um, I was making like 39,000 a year and that was full-time hours as a manager. And that was terrible that uh, like making 39,000 a year, especially this day and age, right? Terrible. It, you can't really live a proper life off that if you're looking to get somewhere in life, right? So I remember the first year I, and we'll talk more about this in the PDF, which you can download down below, by the way, again. So first year I ended up matching what I'd made from the course, I ended up matching what I'd made previously in retail. It was about it was about thirty nine grand. I think it was like almost to the T, thirty nine grand. And then the year and a half after that, or the second year, I ended up doubling it. So it was eighty k. And then twenty twenty was when I reached past six figures. Right. So again, I don't. I'm not saying this to to boast or gloat or anything like that. I'm just talking about what's possible with this because this has changed my life. Right. The online course business model has changed my life. So as you know, we're looking again at Stripe notifications. This is just within a few days, right? These are just from, from this was from the Amazon FBA course. Okay. So 349, 349, 349, right? This is like multiple a day. Okay. And this was a general occurrence, right? We've got the payouts from Stripe directly to my bank account. Okay. We can, this is obviously, this is obviously before tax. I accidentally skipped this, but that's obviously before tax. Right, but these were coming weekly, okay? These kinds of payouts, All right? So I want to talk a little bit about advantages of an online course, okay? Because there's quite a few. For one, it requires no money, okay? Unlike Amazon FBA where you need, you know, 1,500 to two grand to start, even unlike dropshipping where you need, you know, like two to 300 for ads now to get started. This basically requires no money to get started, okay? You, um, we'll talk, Again, more about this in the PDF, which you can download for free. Uh, you basically only need, uh, even if you have a phone, you don't even need to buy a camera, okay? 
you might need some video editing software, which again, you can get free ones. So really, if you wanted to go the super, super cheap route, if you have a mobile phone to film, you can start with basically zero dollars. So it requires no money to start, very, very low cost, okay? It's, which means it's highly profitable. The, you don't really have any overhead costs. The only overhead costs I have is for the hosting platform, which currently I use Teachable, okay? And that's pretty much it. It's like if, if you count things like your electricity or your internet, obviously they're, you know, that, but that's for everyone, okay? So really there's no overhead costs. It's highly profitable. The content comes from your own knowledge and expertise. So you don't, like I said, it can be an arts and crafts course, okay? You don't have to have a money-making skill, right? You just need to have a skill and a set out way to get from point A to point B. So you don't have to worry about being, you know, unknowledge, like being not, I don't think unknowledgeable is a word, but being not knowledgeable about a certain topic because you're teaching about what you know. Could be a very simple skill, right? But people want to know how to do it. So it comes from your knowledge and expertise, okay? Next thing is location freedom. It can be done from a laptop, right? That's that's the beauty of what I loved about it. That's the beauty of what I've always loved about e-commerce, but especially online learning, especially online education, location freedom. You film it from your phone or, or your camera, upload it. You know, you can be from, you know, teach it live even. But it's all can be done from your home. It can be done from, you know, you don't have to go into an office, you don't have to go into a certain place every single day. Location freedom, right? Now, another big thing is you're paid for your talent and hard work, not trading your time for money. I remember I used to want to be a personal trainer, right? And this is actually what sort of steered me in the direction of online business because I, the only reason I, I, I ended up getting my certificates to be a, a personal trainer, so I actually am a certified PT. The only reason I wanted to do that was so I could do online PT. Okay, I didn't have any intention. I, I didn't end up following through with it because I realized that it wasn't what I wanted to do. But I didn't have any intention of being a personal trainer in an actual gym. I just wanted to teach some people maybe on the side to get some experience. But I, you know, like train people on the side. But I wanted to predominantly teach, uh, like have clients online because I wanted that location freedom. And I didn't want to have to be tied down to trading my time for money. Okay. That's what I didn't like about retail. That's why I ended up pursuing this line of work. That's why I ended up you know, doing e-commerce as a career because I didn't want to trade my time for money because there was a limit. Okay, I thought to myself, even if I'm charging $50 an hour to be a PT, usually sessions go for an hour. So I've got, what, eight hours a day that, that I can train people, eight to 10 hours a day. But it's like the more money that I wanted to make, the more time I had to spend where with online personal training, I could have multiple clients and teach more of them, have more time. I didn't have to spend that hour there. I didn't have to do those hours to get a certain amount of money, okay? It's scalable. If you trade your time for money, it's not really scalable. See what I mean by that? That's the most important thing in my opinion. So here's some things to consider, however, when you are looking to get into this kind of uh, business, right? Looking to get into online course business. First thing, your information needs to be updated regularly, okay? If you wanna have a successful flourishing course business that continually brings in money, it can't, it can't be stale, okay? It can't just be you create the course and then just leave it for years, okay? I usually, for my, for my Amazon course, I usually uh, had a big update every six months, which means even though it's not monthly, my six months update was revamping the entire course, so it made up for it every six months. It was like, I filmed new content, you know, in even if it was like better lighting, new information, right? Most of it was new information, better lighting, better setup. It just, I just updated everything. And I gave those updates for free to my students, okay? For the existing students. Yeah, I gave it to them for free. That was just my deal. You don't have to do that. That was what I did. That was, that was basically my selling point for my students. It's like any updates that come out, you get them for free if you're already a student, right? Tying into this, you need ongoing support. It's almost always required. So for me, I offered messaging support for my students. So you could always, uh, always, you know, they could always message myself through, usually through Facebook. I'd always give them support even after they finish the course. Okay, so that was what I like to do because I was big on support and I've had a lot of people give a lot of good feedback just because of that fact alone. 
So for me, ongoing support is always required. Obviously, some courses are going to require less support than others. Some some courses are going to require more. Mine was a business course. Mine was how to actually launch your own online business. So there's a lot of support required. Okay, if you're doing like a say like a uh, you know we'll get into into this more um, later on, but if you're doing like a kitchen organization um, kind of course that usually, you know, let's just say you're not selling for as much as say a business course, maybe you might not need as much support for that. Okay. Maybe you will, maybe not, but that's just something to consider It's or you need to have the support there. Okay. Again, with this community is very important. It always needs to be a priority. So this is actually one of the harder things in my opinion, because you need to make sure that you're constantly updating content. You constantly have a community where people are getting, are getting involved. And for me, it's one of the harder things unless you have help, okay? Because I have had people that I've hired to help with community. I've done it myself, okay? So I've seen both sides and it is hard because you need to make sure that you're constantly putting in effort. I think what people don't understand with a course business is it's not just the content, which is the work, it comes from after people enroll, okay? It comes from the support, it comes from making sure that the, the, the community is active and it comes from, you know, making sure that you're helping people. So community is very important. You also, one thing to note is you need to be comfortable in front of a camera or using your voice, whether it's a voiceover, whether you're having interviews with people on your course, whether you're, it's just like this, where you're teaching in front of a camera, you need to get comfortable with it because it's the only really real way to deliver the content. And uh, I was never like, I was never, <laughs> as never as good as what I am now. I don't even know if I'm, I'm good in front of a camera. I know I'm more comfortable, but look at my earlier videos on YouTube. I was horrendous in front of a camera, okay? It's something that I had to learn. Uh, obviously, I like done videos like with friends and stuff in the past on YouTube and, and uh, it was... I guess a little bit easier for me because I was used to editing and things like that, but it's, it was never easy for me to get in front of a camera and do informational videos. Okay. It was something that I had to learn. So it's a skill that I suggest you get used to because it is going to be helpful for you. All right. So next thing, most important thing for you guys here, um, or for you watching, if you don't know what you're going to sell, creating your own course, one of the most important things is finding your niche and your market, okay? Because like I said, it doesn't have to be a money-making course, right? So here's what I'd suggest, okay? These are the steps that I'd suggest if you don't know what you're going to sell, what you're going to teach. Make a list of five topics that you're passionate about, knowledgeable on or have had a career in, okay? Maybe you are really good at tennis, okay? Maybe you're really good at, at tennis, right? So You've done tennis for multiple years. Um, I'm just saying that because I played tennis. Just make a list of things that you've either had a career in or you've helped someone with, okay? Or you just know a lot about. This could, this could be anything. Make a list of five topics, okay? Then rank them. This should say rank, but rank them from one to five. One being the most important or interesting, okay? Have a sit down. Think about it for 10, 20 minutes, half an hour, okay? Just sit down and list them, uh, you know, what you think you could help in the most, what you think is the, you know, most helpful for people or what you're most passionate about, what you know the most in, right? Then you could ask a question, okay? Ask a question of, and this could be to, you know, on social media, ask your friends and family, people you may know, create a survey. You could ask a question of, would you like to learn X, okay? Let's go to the organizational video, right, that I'm talking about. Would you like to learn how I, uh, how I organize and label my pantry and kitchen? Okay. I've been organizing my, and I've put here, I've been doing X for some time now. I wonder if you'd like to know. So I've been organizing my kitchen for the past two years. Okay. Uh, organizing my pantry for the past two years. And when people come over, they talk about how nicely organized it is and I was wondering if you'd like to learn how. It could be something that simple, okay? It could be something that simple. I know I've got uh, friends in the in the real estate, like in the real estate kind of area, okay? There's a lot of people that like to learn about real estate. You could say, I've been a real estate agent for the past five years and a lot of people would like to know such and such about houses or such and such about apartments. I, I was interested in knowing if you'd like to know about this, okay? 
ask the question, right? So you got to offer them a hook as well. So if people are interested in that, offer them a hook. So this could be like a free bit of information, right? Gather emails is like similar to what, to what I'm doing with this PDF, being completely honest, okay? Similar to what I'm doing with this PDF that's in the link down below. You give them useful information. This PDF that I'm giving you down below has got a bunch of useful information in it, right? But you offer them a hook, okay? You gather their emails or contact info, okay? PDF, an ebook, a mini course, a webinar, etc. right? Offer them something. It's called a hook because you offer them information, free information, okay? Now, one thing to note here, if you get even a handful of people that are interested in learning for free, then you uh, will have, it says then will be people, but then there will be people who will pay to learn more, right? So if you have people that want to, if you have a handful of people that want to learn for free, that means there's going to be a portion of those people or just a portion of people in general that will pay to learn more, okay? That's the thing with that. If people will are willing to put in their time to learn for free, then people are willing to pay. And when people pay for something, they're more obliged to do it. That means they have a commitment to it, okay? So next thing, are we going to be talking about pre-made or pre-sold courses? Okay, well, we're going to be talking about both, but I'm going to tell you a bit about the differences. So first off, we've got pre-made course, okay? I would only suggest a pre-made course, which means you do the, you film and do the whole entire course. I'd only suggest that for people who already have a following and really know their craft and understand what their target market needs, okay? There's a lot of upfront work, but you'll be offering a finished product. So what I personally did was a pre-made course because I knew about Amazon selling. I knew about dropshipping. I knew what people wanted from teaching it for the past however many years. I knew what content people were after, okay? What I would suggest for a beginner though, okay, for yourself, if you're a beginner watching this, is a pre-sold course which again, suggests for beginners and without a following. Most of you that here are not going to have much of a social media following if you, you might not use social media at all, right? So I would suggest pre-sold and we'll talk a bit more about that as well. So it will take longer to put together, right? Because it involves selling course that isn't finished. It involves live teaching. So usually what a pre-sold course is, is basically you're teaching it live and again, we've got a whole slide on this as well. You're teaching it live, then you are asking people questions during this live, okay? And uh, you will pre-package it then after you teach it live, you'll pre-package it into a course and, you know, obviously edit it, edit it and, and whatnot, and then you will put it out and sell it, okay? So this takes out the guesswork of what your students' needs are. So if you were a beginner and you tried to have a pre-sold course, right, and let's say you you know all about uh, fishing, right? You know all about what kind of reels to get, you know all about how to set up the fishing rod, how to hook the bait, what kind of bait, what kind of setup you need. You know all about that, but you don't know how to teach it to people. Let's say you spend, you spend 20 hours, 50 hours putting together a course, okay? You spend weeks, maybe maybe a month or two putting together this course, but you don't know the questions that need to be answered and you do a whole course up, you might not be able to sell it because you don't know how to teach people. You might not get the results that you're after, okay? If you jump on lives, you know, you jump on, on uh, you know, you teach it live, you jump on webinars and whatnot, you ask the questions and you pre-sell it, okay? You're going to know what people need. You're going to know what they need to be taught. You're going to know what questions they have. You're going to have a better idea going into it. So that's why I suggest pre-sold for beginners. Okay. So here's what a lot of people or a lot of you here will be after. It's selling without a following. And I'll only know, only do this. Okay. I'll know, only do this after finding your niche. Okay. So go back to the slide the way I talk about finding your niche. Make sure to find what you want to sell, what you're most passionate about, what you're most knowledgeable about, okay? Only do this step after you've done that, right? So, step one. I'm moving myself around a lot here. It's got a big head. Step one, gather your interest by using your hook, like I was talking about before, okay? Two, build an email or contact list from people signing up using your hook, okay? So, what you're trying to do is build interest, gather contact information because you don't have a following, Okay, 
you need to build a contact list. You need to build interests around your topic, right? Pre-sell your course, okay, by creating a live event where you teach each step in a private webinar series, okay? So it's obviously talking about that point A to point B, okay? So you can teach it in one video, you can teach it in five videos, you can teach it in 20 videos, right? You just gotta make sure that you're teaching each step in a live where you can ask, you know, you can do it in a webinar. And again, uh, the PDF goes into more detail about this. So you just need to make sure that you're teaching each step live where you can, where you can, you know, answer people's questions. Okay. And, uh, really get to know what your, you know, what your clients, what your students need. Right. Usually you offer a discount, uh, suggested offer a discount in this. So Usually what happens is instead of offering what your full price of your course will be, you might offer like a half, you know, like a 50% off, you know, for people who, who want to learn it live for people who want to, you let people know that it's, that it's in the early stages or not so much in the early stages, but you're letting people know that, that for teaching it live, you're going to give them a discount. Okay. Teach it to them live because it's like the early iteration of your course. Okay. And then when the full one comes out, they get it for free, but usually it's discounted. Okay, that's how you get people in. Uh, step four, I've done both steps here, but we'll just go through both of them. Step four, gather feedback from the people in your webinars and refine your teaching information. So again, ask for feedback. Keep, you know, keep asking the questions of, okay, how can this be taught better? What else, you know, what would you prefer here? What is not needed? What extra, you know, info is needed here? What do you guys want to know? Okay, just get feedback. Step five, Use your recordings from your webinars and organize them into a prepackaged course. Like I said, you let's say you do them over a course, you know, over a series of 10 videos, 10 live teachings, okay? You prepackage all of that. You've already got each step along the way. You can prepackage it, uh, you know, edit, edit it where you need to, and you already know what information. You can use that, in, that information, those questions that people ask to, uh, you know, set it out into a, you know, a laid out, point A to point B course. So you've already got a prepackaged. You don't you don't have to guess what steps need to go where. You already have it there. Okay? Because you've been teaching it over these over these series of videos that you've been doing live. Right? Step six. Focus on your initial students and getting them results. They this is very important. They will then become your biggest advocates and continue to sell your course for you. So you focus on those initial students. Even if you have three three, five students, you know, in there, you focus on them, getting them results. Okay. What will, what do your results look like? It's your point B. That's what your results are. Okay. So if you're doing again, a fishing course, maybe it could be to have a full fishing setup, have a full rod, maybe, you know, learn how to catch certain fish, learn the, you know, what, you know, good fishing spots, fishing techniques. I don't really know much about fishing myself, but if you're someone who does know about fishing, you'll know, okay, their point B is, you know, uh, having a full setup, catching fish regularly or, or knowing knowing how to reel in a fish, okay? Something very simple like that, right? Focus on those first initial, initial students. If you get them results, they're going to do things like talk word of mouth. They're going to do things like promote your course for you or you can even get testimonials from them. You getting them results is them selling their course for you, okay? Now, what's... I want to talk about hosting platforms and this is what I, you know, this is uh, something that's going to be very important because it's where you host your course. It's where your, your, your students have their course accounts, you know, their student accounts and how you take payments and things like that. Okay. So this is something that you don't really need to worry about until later on, but it's good to talk about because I want to talk about my experience with hosting platforms from the past four years. Okay. So the one that I use is Teachable. I've been using that for the past four years. I personally use this, like I said, personally use this for the platform for the past four years. Very safe and stable platform. I haven't really had any issues with it. Includes a lot of features. I built my website on the platform, okay? I've had coaching on the platform. Uh, I hold all my student accounts so I can see how much they've done of the courses, uh, you know, the payments that they've made, any info if I need to log in for them or if they've lost their password. Got all that stuff on Teachable. Quite, quite good in that sense. Only thing I don't like about it is it's quite expensive for what it is. Okay. Well, quite expensive compared to some other platforms, which I'll get into in a second. Uh, one thing that's really turned me off Teachable and why I might be changing from Teachable, it's only happened in the past six months or so, which I don't like. 
Okay, it might not be an issue for some people, but it's forced me to change from a regular Stripe account to a new Stripe Express account. Okay, the reason they've done this is, well, from what I can see, is they utilize money reserves on each sale for security, which again is quite annoying. So let's say I sell a course for $400, okay? They will take, I think it's 10% of each sale. So right now I've got like five to $600 in reserves, which won't get released. They get released periodically every uh, every month. So every 30 days. And that's just to save, I think it's to save them from chargebacks because uh, you know, for refunds and things like that. Not from my own personal course. I think it's just been from other people's courses because everyone who's on Teachable now has to do it from what I can gather. I used to like Stripe, uh, a normal regular Stripe account because you could get notifications on your phone. Okay, not just for payouts, but for payments. Stripe Express, it doesn't give you notifications for, I know it's relatively new, but it doesn't give you notifications for, uh, you know, on your app through your phone about getting payments. I can only see who's come through the course through email now, uh, which is quite annoying. And I don't like this this uh, money reserve thing because it's like they hold the 10, 20, 30, $50, whatever it is for 30 days. And then you get a payment come through on your phone. And it's like, okay, you know, it's only like 10, $20. You know, it's like, cool. You know, you get the money after after 30 days, but I just don't like having the money the money reserves there because not many people refund my course. It's just kind of annoying to me. Could be petty for me, but I just like having a normal Stripe account over an Express Stripe account. It's just my own personal thing. But uh, apart from that, Teachable is quite good, okay? Then you've got others. You've got others like Hijabi, uh, Udemy, Thinkific, et cetera. Okay? These can be a lot cheaper. Uh, there are more people tend to promote these over Teachable. I don't actually see a lot of people use Teachable. I only use Teachable from the beginning because I saw that some people were using Teachable and it was just the one that I found first that looked quite good for what I needed, okay? Only downside is I've never used these platforms personally, so I can't talk too much about them. I know a lot of people use Kajabi, okay? I think Kajabi is about the same price as Teachable, but it's a lot of people use it and a lot of people love it. Now, the one that I've been looking at it's called Fresh Learn. Okay, I will most likely be changing to this platform. And again, this all comes down to when I'm talking about these hosting platforms, it comes down to your needs, it comes down to what you've heard, it comes down to do your research on them. Okay, do your research on these platforms. You will need to have a hosting platform. I don't recommend uh, having your own website, like basically hosting it on your own website. I recommend creating a website through one of these platforms. So at least you've got the infrastructure there. It's a lot easier and you just pay the monthly subscription, right? But I'm thinking of going to Fresh Learn. I actually got approached by them through email and usually I don't look at emails, but I thought something to look at, okay? Has all the features I need, can use a regular Stripe account on it, which I haven't set anything up with them yet, but it's looking quite good and it's cheaper. It's only $70 a month for the premium package, right? Which is what I need. It has no transaction fees. It has everything that, that I need. I can personalize it to the way that I need. They even have uh, a lot of other features that Teachable don't have. So I might be looking at Fresh Learn because it's like half the price, $150 a month for Teachable, $70 a month for the premium package of Fresh Learn. Obviously the downside, it's a new platform not used by as many creators, but it is growing from what I can see. It is growing, okay? And they're getting a lot of uh, happy happy customers using Fresh Learn, okay? So something to note is just do your research on hosting platforms, okay? So another thing is pricing your course. Okay, it's it's a struggle that that I've gone through. It's a struggle with a lot of other new uh, course creators go through pricing your course. So how do we price it? Okay, again, move myself over here. I'll move myself down here. Now, pricing is the pain point, and we'll go into more details of this. Pain point plus your offer take away the barrier equals your offer. Okay, so what does that mean? You're looking like a a lot of mumbo jumbo right now. So what's the pain point? The pain point is the problem or issue your student is currently facing, okay? Then we add your offer. So we add on what the value of the solution you're offering is, okay? So you've got the pain point plus you add in the value of the solution you're offering, right? Move myself over here. Then we take away the barrier, okay? 
what your students are currently paying by having the pain point. Now, a, an example of this is, okay, um, you know, going by some of my research and, and looking at some other course creators and things like that, there's a course creator, let's just say, I can't remember her name, but uh, she offers a natural skincare regime to help people get rid of acne on their face, okay? So before we get into that, uh, before we get into that story, I just wanna talk about your value, just the last thing here, just to get it out of the way. The value of your knowledge, product or service and its solution to the pain point. Okay, so let's say, you know, when I'm talking about this example, there's a lady who has a very successful course, like selling easily over six figures, talking about natural, she's got a natural remedy or natural ways to get rid of acne, okay? So let's talk about the pain point, the problem or issue your student is currently facing. Her students were currently facing, or her clients were currently facing the issue of having acne that they couldn't get rid of, okay? Her value was offering a free, inexpensive, uh, natural ways to get rid of acne. Now the barrier, what your students are currently paying by having the pain point, these students was, were literally spending hundreds of hundreds to thousands of dollars, maybe tens of thousands of dollars to get rid of this acne. So your value, or her value in this was offering a, an inexpensive um, natural solution, okay, to their problem, which the problem they were facing was having acne they couldn't get rid of. Okay, so she can value her her knowledge, her product, her service by how much you know how much it's costing these students to not go for her her service. Okay, so by saving them thousands of dollars, by saving them tens of thousands of dollars, that means that her product is quite valuable. Okay, for me, and I've got a little uh, little bit of info coming up here, but for me, my my service was offering uh, how to you know start making your own side hustle, build your own business from scratch, start making a bit of side hustle income, potentially having a full-time income, okay? So the barrier, what my students were facing by, uh, you know, what my students were paying by having this pain point is they don't have a solution. Maybe they need a bit of extra money. Maybe they don't like their nine to five, okay? Their pain point was maybe having a nine to five or having a job that they don't like, or maybe they need to earn a bit of extra money on top of their income that they have already, okay? So my solution, right, was quite good for them because it was, okay, you can earn a bit of extra money. You don't have to go to a job to earn this money. You can do it from home. You can earn this money from home, right? So you gotta look, you gotta look at these things, okay? I'll bring myself down here so you can see it again. You gotta look at these things and look at what your value is, okay? So one thing to note here, the bigger problem you're solving, the more value you're giving, okay? More, the more, and the more value you're giving, the more you can charge for your service, All right? So an example, a course, let's say you have a course that teaches you how to completely organize your kitchen and office space. This could sell very well at a price point of 50 to $100, okay? Then you've got a course on the other side, you've got a course that's teaching how to build a professional photographer portfolio, this could be a this could sell very well at a price point of five hundred to a thousand dollars. They're different skills, okay? Solutions to bigger, more sophisticated problems sell at a higher price point. But okay, however, doesn't mean that you can't make a lot of money selling a cheaper course. So I've had a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there selling cheaper arts and crafts courses, making easily making six figures a year. Okay, just look it up on Google. There's heaps of course creators out there. Okay, so you don't have to just have a higher price course to make those six figures. Obviously you're going to have to get more people in, but it's how you market it. It's how you teach people. It's how you get people from point A to point B. If you've got the cheaper course that's teaching people how to organize their kitchen and office space, but it's a very clear way how to get from point A, having a messy kitchen, uh, messy office space to having a completely organized one, and people are happy with it, it gives them results. Of course you can sell that and and make six figures, of course. You want to get to 10K a month? You can do that. It's possible. It just depends on how you market it, okay? Depends on how helpful you are. You look at this stuff. Pain point, your offer, barrier, your value. Look at that. It's very important, okay? And it's going to be hard at the start to determine your price point, but you will figure it out once you start finding out the answers to these. 
and you start figuring out how you can help people get from point A to point B. You'll see how valuable it is. Okay, but like I said, you don't have to have a higher price course just to sell a lot. Right. Okay. So launching your course. These are some popular launch methods, and I go a bit more into detail in the PDF in this, but these are just to give you some ideas. I'm not going to go too in-depth with the launching, but um, here's some ideas for you. Email marketing launch, okay? And I'll give you some examples of my own course, what I've done for launches for them. You've got email marketing. Okay, you can launch by email. You can launch by social media. I've done both. I've done these here, okay? Personally, I've done email, Instagram, YouTube launches, right? You've also got a webinar launch. Okay, which, like I said, if you're pre-selling your course, you can actually launch it via webinar. So you don't have to do it by social media or by email. Um, I'd recommend if you're gathering emails, do it by email. But let's just say you've done all your all your series, all your teachings on webinar, like on webinars, you can sell it on a webinar. Maybe you could say, okay, at the end of your last lesson, you could say, okay, the course is now launched. Or you could do a new webinar saying, you know, teaching a little bit more, some extra about what you what you want to teach. And then right at the end of it, you say, by the way, okay, my course is now fully launched and then you could sell it through webinar, okay? It's a way to do it through webinar. Or you could have a private group launch. I have also done this as well through Facebook group. I've done launches through there. Uh, if you have a Discord or, you know, if you have even uh, like another social platform, we've got a group. You can start growing your group by doing the email stuff. Okay, you can send them to a group. You can send it through social media. If you have a private group, you can do a launch through there as well. So many ways to launch. Okay, many ways to launch. Now, I want to talk a little bit about some of my launching. Okay, some of my launch strategies. So this was my first ever launch. Okay, this was when I first ever launched my Amazon course four years ago. Launching with a following. And we'll also talk about launching without a following. This was the YouTube video launch I did for Ecom Excellence. Back then it was named Amazon Seller Excellence back in 2018. I did a tiny bit of advert, a very tiny bit of advertising. I'm talking like, like $10, $20, okay? Apart from that, I have barely ever touched advertising, right? So I'm not lying when I say most of this came organically, okay? Because they people watch my other videos on YouTube as well. So I launched this course back with only around 300 subscribers, okay? I barely had any subscribers back then. Four years ago, when I started doing this, I was around like 300 subs, right? With 300 subscribers, and I had, I think, like a very small Facebook group. Didn't have many people in it. Had like had like 50 people in it. And it was a public, it was like a private group, but it was public, okay? So it wasn't for students or anything. I only had 300 subscribers, and I made $1,500 in my first month of selling the course. Now, the reason for that, okay, I was able to achieve this because of the helpful con content I had provided for the past year before that. I built a small but loyal fan base. I just made a short video saying, hey, look, Amazon Seller Excellence Course is live. I let people know prior that I was in the midst of it because this was after I had people asking for it. So I had people ready to go, basically like ready to get into this course, okay? I had helpful content before that and I just made a quick video saying, look, it's live. Uh, I talked a bit about what Amazon was, talked a bit about, okay, step-by-step, step, blah, blah, blah. It's only two minutes, right? As you can see here. So... I did that and I launched it, did a tiny bit of advertising. It wasn't much, right? This, this video has got a, lots of, like, a lot of views um, over the past years. But um, yeah, that's all I did for it, okay? It was just a video launch. Now, launching without a following. These are a couple of things that I did, okay? Uh, I did email and a social media launch. Obviously, a social media launch, you need a bit of a following, but an email will work very well for you once you start getting contact info. So, and what I mean by contact info is from your hook, okay? So, I launched my second course, Dropshipping Australia, in 2020, mainly using email marketing and social media, okay? A lot of it was email. Now, I had around five people sign up over the next few days, which brought in about $750, okay? Just over like two, maybe three days, $750. I think the, pri the course was only priced at about 150 bucks. okay? Again, I had already showed results and provided useful information months before this launch. So for like six months before this, a few months before this, I had documented my journey of dropshipping and uh, shown results, shown how to do things, right? And then shown on my social media, my, my sales numbers. I was getting like 15 to 20K uh, in revenue a month from my stores, from my Shopify stores. 
So I was getting results. I had, was getting like 1500, you know, uh, in profit a week for, from some of these, from one of these drop shipping stores. Right. So had results there again, I had people asking. So that was when I started making it. Okay. This is why gathering contact information by using a hook is so important, right? Cause it's email stuff. Okay. What I've got here is this was to my other FBA students. I gave them a special discount for being a student of my Amazon course already, but I had built a list of people up, which I could email, okay? And then again, I don't have many people on my Instagram. I think back then I only had like 1,300 people on my Instagram. I think now I've, I've still only got like around 2,000 people on my Instagram. So I don't have a massive following, but a following is a following, okay? And if you have good content, if you have a loyal fan base, it still does help immensely, okay? So like I said, this is why gathering contact information by using a hook is so important. Okay, that's why a hook is important. It allows you to build a list of people who are already interested in what you're offering. Remember, if a large amount of people will invest their time into learning for free, or even a handful of people can invest their time learning for free, then a percentage of those people will pay to learn more. That's important. Okay, that's important. If you know that people want to learn this for free, that's why doing your market research and asking the questions is so important. If you know that people want to learn for free, then people will invest their money and learn more in depth. When people invest money, they're more obliged to do it. They have more commitment to it. Okay. So that's something very important to know. Now, very important, scaling to 10K a month and beyond. And again, I've scaled to 10K a month and beyond from my own personal courses, from organic traffic mainly. I've done 10K a month and beyond. So I know what I'm talking about here with this stuff. Okay. Because I've done it myself. First thing you need to set a clear goal. Okay, so this could be, I will make 10K a month from the business. It could be something as simple as, I will enroll five students this month, or I will enroll five students in a month. Okay, set a clear goal because you've got to know what you're working towards. Figure out how to get there. Figure out how to get to that goal. Okay, if I sell, so 10K a month from this business, right? You want to hit 10K a month. If I sell my course for $100, I'll need to enroll 100 students a month to get 10K. If I sell my course for 1,000, I'll need to enroll 10 a month, right? So obviously these are just different scenarios, but you got to think of how am I going to get there, okay? I'll, let's say I'll enroll five students this month. How do I enroll five students? Maybe I talk to 50 people, okay? Get five of those people in there. Maybe I reach out to X amount of people, okay? How will I get five students a month? Right, you got to figure out how to get there. You got to try different things. You have to really reverse engineer it. Okay, get your goal, right? Your goal, your endpoint, and work backwards. Okay, connect the dots backwards on how to get there. Okay, best way to do it. Create results. Okay, work closely with your early students. Do your best to bring them results. Their results will be used as testimonials to bring in more students. Like I said before, you always work close closely with your students, but pay a lot of attention to your early students, get them results. Because if you have results from your early students, they'll become like your raving fans. They'll become the people that that talk about your course saying that it works, gives them results, it's worth the money. If you have people like that, if you have results, you get more students, more sales, okay? Then rinse and repeat, right? Continue refining your teaching, figuring out how to better help students get from point A to point B. The more focus on results, the more successful students you'll have, the more successful successful students means more sales and more growth, uh, more growth. So you are just rinse repeating. So making sure that the students that you get in, you spend close time with them, okay? And you get them results, okay? It's like a snowball effect, okay? It starts off small and then it's like uh, more students, more results, more people talk about it. It's a big big snowball effect. And that's how you scale. Okay. That's how you keep scaling. All right. Obviously you've got things like advertising as well, but I wouldn't start doing advertising and things like that uh, until you start getting results for your students. Okay. So note here, this is all easier said than done. Okay. You will face roadblocks and times where you feel like giving up. It happened to me. Okay. It's not an e people think that it's an easy business. Okay. It, costs no money to start, right? It is easier than a lot of other businesses, but it's still hard because it's a lot of maintenance work, okay? Don't be discouraged if your course doesn't sell 
straight up to launch, right? Don't be discouraged, okay? Learn, tweak, and refine. If your main focus is how to get your students from point A to point B, you will become a successful course creator. If your main focus, again, read that again. If your main focus is to get your students the results that they are looking for from point A to point B, you'll become successful, okay? Look at this stuff. Rinse and repeat. Refine your teaching. Figure out what they need, okay? If you have a clear path, if you get better and better at teaching people to get from point A to point B, you'll be successful at it. can guarantee that, okay? So your course business can become your tool of freedom. Okay, this is the last thing I want to say. Again, I've got a screenshot here. Got a cool little image of me standing here in front of a lit up tree. Really cool, all smiles. But in all seriousness, it has been a massive tool for me to really leapfrog me in my e-com career. Okay, in teaching people and learning about the online education business. And financially, it's been a huge help. And it's been a it's been a, a business, the course business has been an e-com business that I've basically fallen in love with because not only is it good for you financially, but it gives you so much to look forward to in terms of helping people, so much fulfillment, right? As you can see here, just my screenshot, you know, this doing like 4K in a week, 5K in a week was quite normal. And there's people doing a hell of a lot more than what I am in courses. And again, I'm selling to majority just Aussies, right? With this, with these courses that I do, okay? So people who are selling worldwide, massive amounts. People who are advertising, doing massive amounts. This is just normal for them. This is like, this is like in a few hours for a lot of people. But for me, and for most of you out there, I'd say four to five grand a week is quite good money, right? So again, like I said, it's it's a it's a fulfilling business. Um, obviously, it takes work to get into. It takes work to maintain, right? But it's so fulfilling, and it's just the potential of growth and how it can change your life is huge. Okay, I always stand by that. Please, if you have any suggestions or anything that you want to know about this uh, about this online business, please let me know. But like I said, if you are interested in learning more about this, okay, I've got a more in depth PDF. Okay, it goes over these steps uh, in a bit more written detail, and it's completely free. So go to the link down below and download it. Apart from that, guys, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day or night wherever you're watching. Stay safe. I'll be talking about this more in the coming future. Okay, stay safe. I'll see you guys in the next one.